Welcome to worship here at Roseville Lutheran Church during this season of Lent. Every Wednesday evening, we invite you to come back and participate in our evening worship. And this season, we are following the theme, Lift Every Voice. And every Wednesday, you're going to be invited in to listen in on a conversation of race and reconciliation. Led by Roseville Lutheran's young adult life coach, Jamie Johnson, You'll be able to hear and listen the voices of six of our young adults from our community as they speak deeply and intimately about the issues of race and what reconciliation can look like. So again, welcome. Welcome to worship as we lift up our voices with theirs. reading from John, the fourth chapter. But Jesus had to go through Samaria. So he came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's, Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. And Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Just then his disciples came. They were astonished that he was speaking with a woman, but no one said, what do you want? Or why are you speaking with her? 
Word of God, Word of Life. Thanks be to God. So I'm really excited for this session. Um, our first session, we talked about um, the racial wall, that, that it's invisible, it's out there. Um, the Bible even declares it in Ephesians chapter 2 that there was a wall of division and hostility um, that was torn down through Christ on the cross, uniting us together. Um, second session, we talked about the call, God's call for each of us to become reconcilers. He's given us the message and the ministry and the leadership and the courage to be reconcilers. Not just certain people, not just the Dr. Kings of the world, or the Sojourner Truths or there, all of us. But now we're going to actually get a little bit practical. What are some things we can do? What are some attitudes that we can put on to help us in this work? So. This session is entitled Race, Our First Racial Reconciliation Mandate called Radical Intentionality. So if we're going to be reconcilers, we have to be intentional. It has to be a part of our DNA. It's not just something we think about once when a travesty or a horrific murder happens. That reconciliation is in our DNA. We're always thinking about it. It's intentional. And not just intentional. We're radically intentional about it. Okay? Um, let me read this quote first by Dr. King. In his thoughts of radical intentionality, he said this, and I, I love this quote. He said, I refuse to accept the view that humankind is so tragically bound to the starless midnight of racism and war that the bright daybreak of peace and brotherhood and sisterhood can never become a reality. I believe the unarmed truth and unconditional love will have the final word. There was a conviction in a person like Dr. King. There was an intentionality because of that call. We will not stop the fight. We will not stop creating systems of justice. We will not stop individual acts of love and unity. But, question is posed to you all. And once again, let's put it in the context of not just society, let's put it in the context of those of us in the body of Christ. Do you see that kind of attitude for racial reconciliation and unity amongst God's, God's people today? Why or why not? Um, I don't think it happens enough. Um, I believe we all love to be comfortable. Um, and as Christ followers, we aren't called to be comfortable. Um, it's never going to be about how many African Americans you have in your church or how many Latinos you have in your church. Come on. No matter what, if there isn't cultural bridges built, there will always be separation within the churches, whether if it's services, youth groups, or even just the entire church itself. Yeah, and speak, so, that. speak that truth. Okay, come on, anybody else? Yeah. Let's talk real talk. Exactly what Jose said. But I do see Christian people in the church um, trying to be reconcilers. They're trying to build the gap, they, to, bid, to bridge, yeah. the yeah, bridge the gaps along yeah. racial lines. Um, but there aren't enough people doing this. There aren't enough people with this active kind of mindset. And as Christians, we tend to love this kumbaya mindset of what unity looks like. But we don't always feel comfortable getting our hands dirty, going to the direct sources and doing the work, taking action. We claim we want to be more like Jesus, but Jesus did all of these things and yeah. more. Yeah. So why don't we? Yeah, yeah I, think, I think what we're saying on this part is that's why it's a radical call. But the call to Christ is radical. And the, the, it's, it's radical to love one another, agape love. Agape love has less to do with, with an emotional feeling. It's an action of love and unity. And once again, it's very personal in the relationships we have, but it's very corporate in the sense of how are we making just systems in our communities and our society. But, are we doing enough in the church? 
Serenity, what do you think? Um, we talked about Dr. King earlier, and I think he would be completely devastated to see the inequality going on within our society and within the churches. Um, if you put the pictures of the protests from the, 60, from the 60s and compare them to the pictures of today, they look exactly the same. Um, mm. As children of God, I think it's our job to bridge the gap between racial inequality and racial equity and okay. change history. Come on, change history. That goes back to what you guys were saying before, the time is now. Like what do we, all right, the time is now. For your generation, for my gen, I mean the time is now. Anybody else? You know, uh, yeah. Also, I just want to say the time is absolutely now because when you think about it, it's not a coincidence that COVID and everything shutting down and having to be locked up in our houses happened at the same time that this racial movement happened. You know, I really do. I think God has had enough of racial division. I mean, you look at it in the Bible, uh, just tons of racial division everywhere. Everywhere there's racial division. And I think he's had enough and he put his timing perfect that we can settle down and deal with these issues. Yeah, good, good. Anybody else? Yeah, I would say no from most of what I've experienced. Um, I see efforts and attempts, but I don't actually see racial reconciliation among God's people. And if anything, I feel like there's a facade and mm. a false image to be a reconciler just because we're Christians. Mm -hmm. And we need to ask ourselves if we would do any of this work if we didn't have the title of being a Christian. Okay, she's stepping on some toes now. The false image, we, we project this false image. I love you, but you not really understand this radical intentionality that we have to have to break down these walls. But we like to put on, it gave me goosebumps, um, this facade that we're saying, or this image, this false image, that's heavy. That's heavy, but we're about trying to tell the truth here. Mishi. Yeah, I, um, that's really heavy. Um, when April um, just explained that, um, personally, I, a small kind of a personal story with that, um, my college that I go to right now is predominantly a white institution, and it's a Christian college, but it's, it's okay that we do want that, oh, kumbaya, love, and stuff like that, but it hasn't been really shown. Like, as much as like, the community that we, think that we have, it hasn't been shown within this Christian college that we're at. Yeah, it's, it's like if we're a body of believers, the quote that Dr. King was saying is, we should be the bright and morning stars. We should have the light shine of love and justice. And once again, not something that we just do, but it should come from our DNA, our spiritual soul DNA that we have this, the conviction that when I see my brother or sister hurting from a different culture, that I go, I sacrifice, it's intentional. From the, from the, from the beginning, matter of fact, this is something that we and I like to do. So even, even on, a, on, on, on something simple, let me give an example. Even when I'm at Target or, or Walmart, or, and if there's different cultures of people on the, on the checkout lane, I'll go into the checkout lane of the person for a different culture just to say hello and connect because I don't know if, if they have a relationship with another white male or if another white male has been um, even said hello to them today because of these walls of division and separation. It's funny, it's, it's, in, it's everywhere you look that you go, how can I break down the walls? How can I bring reconciliation? from the small to the large. But once again, if I go back to April, not waiting for the tragic piece to happen and we put on the, the false image, but it, it comes a real part of who we are. It's okay to not know what you don't know, but once you know the truth, we've gotta be able to live that out, right? Um, let, me, let me go this. Jesus said in John 4, and put this in perspective, he had to go through Samaria. And what I like about that context is knowing that Samaria was a Syrian and Jewish blooded people, which, which in the negative they called half-breeds, okay, biracial people. They were unclean, they were unfit. And good religious teachers would always go around Samaria. But I love that Jesus said, I had 
to go through Samaria. Radical intentionality. Both as um, gender connection of a religious back then, you know, a good religious leader didn't connect with females and certainly didn't connect with a uh, Samaritan female. But Jesus is always about this reconciliation, breaking down walls. I had to go through Samaria. That's why, who said the kumbaya? Uh, the kumbaya feeling, it's nice, but it's not, it's not something we hold on to. It's something that we have to go, yes, unity, singing together, loving together, but the radical work to get to kumbaya is real work. Um, this is something that one of you all wrote that I, I found a long time ago. Being intentional in our thoughts, words, and actions help us tear down systematic walls of racism and empower love, unity, and justice everywhere. It also is about experiencing committed relationships with brothers and sisters across racial lines, which requires purposeful, positive, and planned activities that facilitate reconciliation and healthy cross-cultural dynamics. Who wants to take credit for that quote? Someone, somebody here, Mishi will give that quote to you, okay? <laughs> um, so the opposite of radical intentionality is a term we call colorblindness. The opposite of radical intentionality is colorblindness. And Talia, you had a definition of colorblindness you wanted to share. Yeah, so the definition of colorblindness is saying, I don't see color. Colorblind racism is the belief that racism is no longer a problem and that we all have equal opportunities. People who subscribe to colorblind explanations claim that they do not see the color of people's skin and believe everyone to be equal. Colorblindness prevents us from seeing the historical causes of racial inequity and how racial inequity persists in our society today. So let me just ask the question, why is racial colorblindness so dangerous in tearing down walls of racism in America? Why is it dangerous? Um, Jose. I, I mean, it's very dangerous um, because institutionally and systematically, whether if you're white or black, you, every, whoever you are in America, you fall into this category in the system and you're given a specific advantage or a specific specific share, mm. you know? And so that, that it's, very, it's very dangerous on that, on that standpoint. All right, let's talk about it. Because you hear it a lot, I don't see color. You know, I don't see color. Why is, can that be dangerous? Colorblindness is dangerous because it's imaginary. By being colorblind, you live in a world that is simply not there. And yes, it's great to think about what if, what if we were all seen the same in society, regardless of our skin color, we were all treated equally? But that is just not the reality. When you tell someone, I don't see color, you're erasing a part of their cultural identity of their humanism. You're telling them, I don't see you for who you are. It's funny, even in, in the book of Revelations, in the picture of heaven and glory, what it'll be for all of us, even the scriptures declare every tribe, every nation, and every language. It, it doesn't erase the culture or color um, in the nations. It actually describes every nation and tribe and language will be in unity worshiping the Lord. It doesn't just say we're all just one spirit and that's it, even though we are. But even God in his beauty paints the picture of, of that aspect. Any other dangers to color blindness? Um, I'd say that if you can't see color, then you can't see patterns. Wow. And if you can't see patterns, then you'll never be able to see and distinguish the oppressed. Hold on, sister. Say that again. Say that again. If you can't see color, then you can't see pattern. And if you can't see patterns, then you'll never be able to see and distinguish the oppressed. Wow. You'll never be able to reach different communities by thinking that we are all the same. There are so many different backgrounds of people, let alone cross-culturally. So at its core, it's just another form of racism. Breathe on that for a moment. Breathe on that for a moment. That's heavy. Radical intentionality, and I just want to throw this out there really quickly. Another mandate for racial reconciliation is leaving our comfort zones. So in closure, in order 
for the body of Christ to build these changes, there has to be in our toolbox this aspect of, and we put it on in our attitudes, that we are going to be radically intentional about justice, love, and unity. And it's time to leave our comfort zones to dismantle the wall of hatred and division and racism. I have to leave my comfort zone. I can't just be with my own people and pretend I don't see nothing and pretend, like you said, Apo, this false image that we're pretending. It's time to get real and get honest with where we are on the journey. Do we have some prejudiced beliefs, stereotypes that keep us back, racist ideas that we've clung to from our families, from the culture? I mean, it's there, right? That's what we're saying. And what's sad and what hurts is that it's infiltrated the body of Christ in America, historically and presently. But the call still goes out, doesn't it? To be reconcilers. But to be reconcilers, we have to be intentional. We have to leave our comfort zones. Amen? Amen. 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 On behalf of us here at Roseville Lutheran Church, we want to thank you. Thank you for the ways you engage in our mission and our work, together as a community united by grace. Your gifts given in whatever ways and whatever amounts support sustaining ministries such as the one you're a part of this evening. It sustains these uh, conversations with our young adults. It's transforming lives in new and remarkable ways. And so again, thank you for your generosity. Thank you for your gifts. Good and gracious God, you invite us to recognize and revere your divine image and likeness in our neighbor. Enable us to see the reality of racism and free us to challenge and uproot it in our neighborhoods, in our communities, our nation, and in, in ourselves. Gracious God, bless us as a people. Open our eyes to see more clearly your calling for compassion and hope. Give us the knowledge to understand more keenly, to hear more fully the voices of our brothers and sisters of color. Grant us the grace to reflect on our own actions and inactions that contribute to this pain and the strength to follow you into a new creation where all may be made new. All this we pray in the name of Christ who reconciled him to the world, the world to himself and sends us forth with the ministry of peace. Amen. And now may you go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.